Continuing on with analyzing graphs using increasing, decreasing, constant, maximum, and minimum, we're going to work through another example. But this example gives us the function and the function only. And our job is to figure out these things by using our graphing calculator. So let me pull up my graphing calculator here. So I have my graphing calculator here, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my equation. H of x equals this here. So when we plug this in, we need to go to the y equals, and we type in exactly what we see. Negative 0 0.09x to the third power. Now I have to push over to get out of my third power plus 0.5x squared minus 0.1x plus 1. And we're going to graph this on the standard window. So we're going to push the zoom and then the six button. That gives us the standard window. And we see this lovely graph here. OK, using our graphing calculator, we want to figure out where our graph is increasing, decreasing. Notice I skipped out the constant, because typically polynomial functions like this here do not have any constant values. And then maximum and minimum. So now that I have my graph drawn here, let's try and just kind of separate out what's happening here. So if I trace the leftmost portion of my graph, starting with the left, notice my graph is going down. So at that point, it's decreasing. So it decreases until here. Now, if I had to guess, that would stop at 0. But guessing is never good. We always want precise. And so I'll show you how to do the calculator to give us precise here in, in a second. Okay, then moving on, notice my graph is increasing, and it looks like it stops about right here. And then past that, notice it is decreasing again. So I have two intervals where my graph is decreasing, and I have a middle interval here where my graph is increasing. Anytime it switches between increasing and decreasing, or vice versa, that gives us our maximums and minimums. So we have a minimum at this point right here, and we have a maximum at that point right there. So we're going to use the calculator to find those maximums and minimums, and then we're going to use that to help us with the very specified values of increasing and decreasing. So let's pull our calculator back up here. Okay, so we said that there is a minimum value right here. So let's use our calculator to find precisely what that minimum value is. We can guess that our y value is 1, and that's happening at our x value of 0. But we never know if that's going to be exactly precise or not, unless the calculator tells us so. So the way that we find the minimum is underneath our calculate feature. To get there, we push the second and then the trace button, because that highlights our calculate. And notice option three and four, maximum and minimum. We said that we are going to look for our minimum at that place, so we are going to use option three. Now the calculator tries to lead you through the process to help find out what this example is. So it's guessing that we have this value here. Um, it wants to know left bound. So you want to go someplace left of where you think your minimum value is. So you need to push your left arrow until you are confident that you are left of your minimum value. Now you can go a little ways or you can go a far ways, just enough to make sure you're confident that you are left of your minimum value. When you feel that you are confident that you're there, go ahead and hit the Enter button. Now my calculator gives us this dotted line here, which is really nice. But your calculators at home will not do so. It only gives you this arrow up here to tell you this is the left point of where we're focusing for the minimum. Notice the calculator moves on. It tells you right bound. So you need to go somewhere right of where you think the minimum value is. So I'm going to push my right arrow until I'm confident that I am right of my minimum value. 
Again, you can go long ways, you can go short ways. Just make sure you're right of it. When you feel that you are right of it, hit enter. Again, my calculator gives me this dotted line here. Yours will not, but it should give you this arrow up here to tell you that we are looking for a minimum in between this value and this value or between these two dotted lines that we have here. Now we have to do a third thing and ask you to guess. So it wants to know where is your minimum value here. So you're going to go wherever you think this minimum value is or is close to it. Now I'm guessing that I'm pretty close to my minimum value here. So when I do so, I hit enter. And notice my minimum is actually not at the point zero 0,1 where we first expected it to be. It is at this value right here. Now we're not going to keep all of these decimal places. We're going to round to, let's just say, three of them. But this tells me my minimum value, which is my y value, 0.995, and the location, which is the minimum, 0 0.102. So my Minimum value was the y value of 0.995, and the location is my x value of 0.10. And I said 102 originally, but it looks like I would actually round it to 103. And so that tells me what this value is approximately right here. 0.103 is my x value, and 0.995 is my y value, rounded to three decimal places. Now I have to do the same thing using my calculator to find this value right here, which is a maximum value. We're going to do it the exact same way using the calculator. So I start by using my calculate feature, second trace to get to calculate, and I know that's a high point, so I'm going to use option four, which is a maximum. So the first thing it tells us is left bound. So we need to go somewhere left of where we think the maximum is. I'm going to go ahead and select right here. Somewhere right of where we think the maximum is, because our next thing was right bound. So go somewhere right of it and hit Enter. So I choose right here. Notice it gives you the arrows that we're finding the maximum between these two arrows. And in my calculator, it's really nice because it gives us the dotted lines as well. The third thing that we have to do is guess. So we need to go to where we think our maximum value is. And I'm guessing it's pretty close to right here. So I select Enter again. And it gives us our maximum points down here, the x value, the y value. And it tells us precisely where our maximum is up here. So my maximum value is this y value of 2.921, if I round it up, 2.921, and the location is the x value. So the x value is 3.601, if I round it up as well there, 3.601. So my maximum value here is 3.601, and my y value is 2.921. Okay, now that I know those precise values, now I can help identify where it's increasing and decreasing. So starting with the leftmost portion of the graph, it is decreasing, so it's decreasing from negative infinity, all the way to this value right here. Well, the x value identified by that is this x value right there, which was 0.103. Now, my blue region where it's increasing, it starts at this x value, the same x value that it ended decreasing of 0.103, and it stops at this x value of my maximum here, which is 3.601. My last interval where it's decreasing, it starts where my increasing stop of 3.601, and it ends all the way to the right portion of this graph, which is identified by positive infinity. So in parts B and C where it's increasing and decreasing, I did those in interval notation. 
If you prefer set builder notation, that is perfectly fine unless the homework specifies which notation to use precisely. Okay, and at that time, we have just utilized our graphing calculator to help us with all of these things to analyze our graph. And so therefore, this ends the examples of analyzing graphs with increasing, decreasing, constant, maximum, and minimum.